So uh, let you uh, let me give you a brief overview over our company, ADC. Uh, we have been an engineering consultant in the wind energy industry for over 30 years now. So we are a fossil, let's say. And along that time, we've been a design partner uh, with the big and the small OEMs uh, designing wind turbines, uh, uh, mainly rotoblade design aerodynamically and structural. But we also do all the other steel um, uh, metal metal based components from the top to the bottom and um, uh, for the wind industry we also do uh, load calculation fully integrated load calculation and lifetime extension and so on and over those years we gained expertise in uh, designing and calculating uh, composite components uh, not only for the wind industry but uh, for all the other sectors uh, like automotive, any kind of automotive and uh, civil aircraft sector. And um, today we are talking about root connection, <laughs> not that one, but uh, root connection for rotor blades. Um, and um, I'm going to talk uh, about, especially about the rotor blade connections at the root and uh, blade to blade connection. But um, our solution for this uh, is adaptable for any kind of um, technical problem so it's not uh, uh it's not for rotor blades only so over the years we calculated and designed many root connections and we faced the challenges and we learned from the oems what what they like what they don't like and uh, many wanted to switch between the two types because of uh, manufacturing issues and cost issues and so on so and by that time, we decided to think about uh, another root solution. Um, and uh, let me give you a brief overview of those two types that are on the market right now. The best known or well-known uh, uh, root connection is the so-called T-bolt connection. In this picture, you see um, the thick root laminate of a rotor blade. So what you basically do is you create a very thick, heavy uh, glass fiber part and then uh, after infusion and demolding, you uh, drill and mill holes in it and stick the metal uh, bolts in, and then you are done. On the other side, there's the bushings. There are several different bushing systems, but they all have in common. You have a bushing or a pre prefab part that you lay in the in the empty mold of a uh, negative mold of the rotor blade and with, with the help of templates, uh, and then you cover it with the shell laminate, the dry shell laminate, and you infuse, um, or you, you bond the um, bushings along with the uh, main infusion of the uh, rotor shell. Um, let's have a look on the pros and cons of those two systems. The T-bolt uh, is very simple. You, there's no accuracy, you just lay your laminate and uh, the accuracy comes from the CNC milling after demolding your rotor blade or your part whatsoever. And after all those thermal deformations and the, the so-called spring in, of, uh, for example, or any kind of tolerances, you just swipe that away by um, milling with a CNC machine afterwards. Um, on the contrary side, the T-bolt is a technical catastrophe. You have your high-tech laminate and then you drill holes in it and you perforate your laminate and you have surface pressure loading. So this is not um, appropriate uh, uh, force transmission for this uh, composite uh, material. Um, the bushing solutions, uh, they are much better. They, um, they make force transmission via uh, uh, shear stresses. Um, and uh, they build the package size is smaller so you can pack more bolts on a bcd to uh, uh, enlarge the um uh, uh possible moment uh, 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 trans, uh um uh, to do it, the the, uh, the loads you, you can increase the loads uh, you can transport over the route sorry um from our point of view it's not technical ideal and we thought of some improvements and uh, in our uh, opinion, those bushings all are too heavy and too uh, long 
and uh, nonetheless they uh, all are in the hand of some few uh, uh, a small number of OEMs so there are major um, royalty fee issues this is what we faced so what will we face tomorrow of course the blades are getting longer and, and bigger and longer blades means uh, higher uh, loads at the root, higher bending moments at the root, and um, then you might need another uh, improved uh, root connection solution. Longer blades, of course, uh, also makes it very attractive to manufacture uh, separated blades where you can uh, manufacture the root and the tip section independently from each other. And then you have to challenge that they have to fit uh, interchangeable they have to fit together. And last but not least, of course, we have to get uh, cheaper every day. So we thought about a solution. Uh, we thought of, uh, could we could we combine the advantages of both uh, systems, the bushings with a small package size, a high force transmission, but uh, the simplicity from a T-bolt and the accuracy of CNC milling to, to enable you a high vertical integration in the process and um, our answer of course is yes <laughs> we we achieved this with uh, our adc bushing system as we call it so it's not only the bushing itself it's a whole uh, installation system and uh, in our opinion this is the perfect low transmission leading to very light and short and uh, nonetheless strong uh, bushing. Yeah. The installation, as I will show you in a second, uh, is very simple. And the high integ vertical integrate is that it has a high vertical integration for any kind of OEM. So the perfect load transmission um, you see here in a picture, uh, what you see is a cut section of the bushing inside a drilled hole that is bonded. And um, the bonded, the, the, the bonding paste is uh, formed geometric, geometrically in, in a way that the forces um, not uh, steer at the very front of the bushing, but uh, are getting smoothed out. So you avoid some kind of uh, stress hot, hot spots, which uh, enhances the bonding. And uh, since it's a circular cylindrical uh, bushing in a cylindrical hole, you have a very homogene, homogeneous um, uh, force transmission. So let's uh, have a look on the installation process. So you start uh, again, here is the example of a rotor plate you can adapt in your head for any kind of solution. Um, you start at the, with a negative mold and you lay make a layup with the glass fiber as for the T-bolt, but in fact, it's for those dimension, it's a uh, 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 much thinner. So in our uh, current uh, design, we have uh, we're talking about 70 millimeters of uh, layout. So after infusion and bonding of the blade shells, you uh, mill uh, the surface, then you drill uh, the holes in, and then you unbox uh, the pushing system and simply stick it in the holes. Yeah, and after um, plugging a vacuum. Uh, tubes and plugging tubes for uh, a resin reservoir. You uh, simply start your vacuum pump and uh, you are done. It's, a, it's designed to be a shoot and forget process. You just start your pump and the infusion um, controls uh, uh, itself yeah, until it's done and until the resin is cured. So you basically you can start the pump and uh, leave for your weekend. Um, Actually, right now we're working on a solution where um, you do not have uh, one single or some uh, uh, reservoir, uh, uh, the resin reservoirs we're uh, developing um, uh, for each bushing a uh, perfectly sized uh, back solution where the ready to mixture um, material is already on. So after curing, you're just breaking with a wrench, for example, you're just breaking the, the head the head and remove it and um, then you have to cure uh, the bonding um, this can be uh, achieved by for example by heating cartridges um, actually right now we're working on, on another solution where uh, the tooling head itself already is the heating cartridges so it's getting cured and tempered um, uh, in one in one step 
Well, after that, you are done. You have your uh, root solution ready. Some words to the tooling itself. It is easy to use. Uh, it is self-centering, it is self-fixing, it is self-sealing. It's all done with a vacuum. And as a nice gimmick, it's independent from the installation orientation. So it, it doesn't matter how you install it. You can uh, do it in a standing position, laying position. You even can do it over your head if you like to. Um, since uh, not every OEM is uh, uh, having a big milling machine, we have this uh, uh, alternative, this optional installation method where you um, fabricate um, wedges with holes in it where you can bond your um, bushing in and then commonly with with all the other uh, bushing solutions you just place with templates in your in your mold and you infuse and bond um, this in uh, while the main infusion process those uh, wedges can be self-made for example you just uh, produce uh, you pro uh, and infuse a uh, a huge uh, glass fiber block that you double saw and drill the holes. Um, alternatively, you can pre-produce those with a fiberplastic uh, injection mold process um, with any kind of uh, thermoplastic uh, matrix or any kind of fibers that achieve, let's say, um, the the usual uh, stiffness. Uh, uh, of, of a root connection laminate. And where do we see uh, the application fields? Um, as I said, at the root, you have a very strong solution, but uh, we uh, point out that the segmentation of rotor blades, um, there you will have uh, to have a very light solution, yeah, because you do not want to have a heavy weight out on a huge uh, lever arm. And uh, because this affects uh, the eigenfrequency, etc., um, and uh, this is uh, a very uh, uh, nice uh, application field uh, because of the accuracy of the CNC milling, you can CNC mill the root and the tip connection, uh, tip section, independently, and they will always fit together. For the root, uh, for the blade root, it also is a, a very nice repair solution. If you have uh, bushing systems uh, in field, operational in field, um, you might, and this is what we already hear, you might uh, uh, experience some damages in the in the bushings. So you just uh, lower your rotor blade and you remove the broken or defect uh, bushing by, let's say, by heating up or by drilling out and then you install uh, the ADC bushing system as a repair solution. Um, this, uh, as I said, is not uh, only for a rotor blade, in, but in special. Um, it is uh, for any kind of uh, connection where you want to connect some steel bolt parts with uh, composite parts. Um, the composite parts uh, should be made of uh, epoxy resin because our bonding solution is epoxy based. Um, but uh, nonetheless, you can also have uh, parts made from polyester. So the, the performance is not that good, but um, it's quite good also, but it's not that good as epoxy. Let's have a look at the overall performance of the system. Uh, right now we are having a, a small version uh, it is uh, fitted for an M30 bolt and at a very short length and uh, at roughly one, one and a half kilogram mass, um, it uh, can uh, withstand a static pullout of 750 kilonewtons and has a quite uh, good uh, fatigue performance. Um, for those of you uh, who are in the rotor blade business, uh, this graph will show you uh, your possible bolt circle diameter with this system um, over uh, at this axis, the static moment of your rotor plate, and on this side, the fatigue uh, damage equivalent load uh, for 200 million load cycles. So you can, let's say, point out what, what bolt circle diameter you can achieve. Um, this is a small solution. It is scalable. 
um, looking at the calculations and at the force transmission itself, um, you can say if you double the diameter, you double the force, or you can downscale half half diameter, half the force. Um, by enlarging the length, uh, you cannot achieve uh, double length, double force, because um, although we, we are smoothing out the tra uh, force transmission spot, uh, you know, infinity length doesn't give you infinity force. So this all is only made uh, possible by a tailor-made new epoxy metric system by Hexion. And um, um, for further details of that, I would hand over to Jan Peter. Yeah, Wolfgang, thanks. Um, I will just uh, start sharing my screen. Um, if you have any questions, there's uh, there's a um, question and answer uh, chat, so to say, to your to the right of your screen. Um, you you can start typing your questions in there. But also, we 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 are going to try and and um, get all of you in in one of those breakout rooms after the presentation, so we can um, further discuss there. Okay, just a few words on Hexion. Um, we have a, a number of business units around the world. We are more than 4,300 people in as many as 50 manufacturing sites around the globe. And um, we, we consider ourselves as one of the leading um, resin developer. And um, this is also why um, ADC approached us with the request for a special resin system for this special bushing system. So when we started out with the development, um, we used one of our um, standard resin systems as a reference to start with. In this case, it was RIM R035C with the Harden uh, RIM H037. And we just used this for the, the, the bonding of um, the, the metal bushing inside a carbon fiber part. Then we performed a static tensor test, and we were surprised to see so many cracks. So we sat together with ADC and, and discussed um, if, if this would be the solution that we want to provide and came up with a minimum requirement list. So first, we want no cracks in the resin during or after the static testing. testing. We want to, to achieve a sufficiently high static load but most of all, we want to achieve excellent fatigue behavior. So we also discussed um, where the, all the cracks are coming from. And one of the theories that we came up with is basically the, the metal bushing and the carbon fiber part. They are so stiff, they do not allow any transverse or lateral contraction in the adhesive resin layer. So, um, they, they introduce a multi-actual stress state into the adhesive layer. And uh, multi-actual stress uh, lets the, the, the adhesive or the resin appear very, very brittle. Now, there seems to be a correlation in, in the literature between um, crack formation, crack propagation, and elongation at break. So we thought, well, maybe if we can come up with a resin system with a very, very high elongation at break, we might overcome the issues of so many cracks in the adhesive layer between the metal bushing and the carbon fiber or glass fiber part. So in one of the later uh, evolutions of, of uh, in, in the project, we did achieve no cracks in the adhesive layer. And um, we did achieve that by increasing the elongation at break of the newly developed system. You can see in blue is the, the reference system, the O35C and the O37 Hardener. And in orange, you can see the newly developed adhesive resin 30 and adhesive hardener 35. And the main difference in my eyes is the extraordinary elongation at break of some something between 25 and 30 percent. The strength of the system is a bit lower, um, but still the, um, the, the fatigue performance um, proves that this is the right concept. 
just a few words on the processing parameters. What you can see here is a TG data, which we also did, of course. We did a pot life measurement and also viscosity development at 40 degrees and at 25 degrees. And um, the initial viscosity, the viscosity development and the pot life um, will almost allow uh, a shell uh, manufacture with this system. So in, uh, in the table overview here, I just wanted to stress the main differences in the tensile test. But the differences are very, very little when it comes to the process properties. So we are talking about a low viscous infusion kind of system that you can still use as an adhesive. To sum up, we did achieve no cracks in the resin and in, in the adhesive resin layer during or after the static testing. We did achieve sufficiently high static loads. And as Wolfgang pointed out on one of his last slides, uh, we also did achieve excellent fatigue behavior. And I think, Wolfgang, uh, you have two more slides to show. So please go ahead. Um, so um, what we now have, the current status of the project is it's a, a laboratory ready pushing solution. Uh, that we finalized the injection, the uh, infusion process. And um, we performed all the major full-scale testings, static as well as uh, fatigue testings. And beside that, we have a shipment-ready pressing system from Hexion, which is feasible to bear all those multi-axial uh, stress states. Um, right now, what's upcoming is the verification of the whole process routine, and uh, there are some pending tests that uh, still have to be performed. And um, who we are addressing this, who should contact us? Um, the ADC uh, company um, is uh, looking out for uh, development partners um, or OAMs uh, or investors even to uh, commercialize the system and who are, let's say, willing to in, in, in insert this product in uh, our system in their product. Um, I thank you all very much for uh, the attention. And uh, I would be happy, we would be happy to uh, get in contact with you. And since this is all new for us all, uh, maybe you just, uh, we, we are available at the booth of Hexion here. You can contact us, but you can go to our website uh, and uh, contact us via email. Also, you can uh, chat with us here, I think, and we would start uh, those breakout rooms maybe, but they're limited to 25 um, uh, visitors. So um, please go ahead. <laughs>